Hello, hello, my name is Tim Tokwe Ajibola, I'm applying in my way. I'm like, I want to take a topic in physics, which is reflection from obvious and its application. Reflection from obvious and its application. Now, the first thing that we have to define, define obvious. There are two types of obvious we have in physics. The first one is what? Concave. Mirror. So that's the first of mirror. What is or what are concave mirrors? Concave mirrors. These are mirrors that they are reflecting surface, curves inward. Again, the reflecting surface, they are reflecting surfaces, curves inward. They what they, they normally give or they normally uh, show real images. Real images. So they are mirrors where ray of light converge after reflection. They are mirrors where ray of light converge. Converge means what? Come together after reflection. Now, when you see mirror like this, it's a concave mirror. Why? This is a coated part. Why this is it reflecting? It curves inward. So, ray of light. We converge on it. Converge means come to all focus at a point. So this is a concave mirror. So this reflection comes to the focus here. This is another reflection. The same thing. This is another one. Like this. This will call at this point. This is a focus. So as it's going in like this. They are what they are converged at this point called focus. So this is a typical example of a concave mirror. The second one is called convex mirror. Convex. What's a convex mirror? This is the one that its reflecting surface curves outward. The one that its reflecting surface curves outward. It normally what gives a virtual image. Normally give or a virtual image. You can also say a mirror whereby the ray of light diverge after reflection. Ray of light diverge after reflection. Let's draw it. So the reflective surface comes outward, something like this. So we have rays coming. Now, from, so let's see, that's the focus. So the diverge after reflection. So let's have that graph, our F here. So, rays of light come, like, coming in, diverge, scattered. That not diverge, scattered. Scattered. Uh -huh. This is what is happening to the ray of light scattered. So, this is a convex. Why this wall? A concave mirror. And in, in, for concave mirror, the object distance is inversely proportional to what? Image distance. Know that for every concave, the object distance is inversely proportional to what? Image distance. But for a convex, the, M, the object distance is directly proportional to what? Image distance. That is the relationship between. So these are the mirrors we have in physics. We have the concave mirror and we have the convex mirror. The other thing you need to do about this mirror before we move ahead is what? The terms we use in the mirror. What are the terms we use in the mirror? The first thing is what? You have to know the mirror aperture. The first one is what? Mirror aperture. Aha. What is mirror aperture? Mirror aperture is the what? Is the distance between the curved edges of the mirror. 
Again, the distance between the cuff and cheese of the mirror is known as well, mirror aperture. So whenever you are talking about aperture, aperture will mean the distance between the curve edges. Number two, the next one is what? Principal axis. Principal. Aha. This is the principal I mean. Principal axis. What is the principal axis? Principal axis is a line. Is a line or an imaginary line that that is located at the middle of the mirror. A line or imaginary line that is located or drawn to the mirror mid. That is the principal as it's supposed to be the mirror. So a line drawn from the wall, from the middle of the mirror, is called the principal as it's just a line that is drawn from the center of the mirror. We call it what? Principal as it. The next one you have to know is what? Pole. Number like three. Pole of the mirror. Call it pole. Pole. What's a pole? A pole is the point where the principal as it is articulates. A point of the mirror where the principal as it articulates. It is usually at the center of the mirror. Usually at where? Located at the center of the mirror. So this point here is called the pole of the mirror. It's a point where the principal as is articulate and it is one usually at the center of the mirror or the midpoint of the wall. Mirror. The next one is what? Principal focus. What is the principal focus? This is a point that is it is all uh, is written as captain tired at that point there. This is a point where a ray of light converges or diverges after reflection. A point on the principal axis where a ray of light converge or diverge after reflection. That point is called principal focus. A point on the principal axis where a ray of light converge or diverge after reflection. That point is called principal focus. The next one is what? Center of curvature. Can you that C there? Can you see it? That is the point here. We call it what? Center of curvature. What center of curvature of a mirror? This is a point where the mirror form a part. PATH. The point where the mirror forms a path or a point on the principal axis where the clear image of an object is seen. Clear image of an object is formed. That point is called center of curvature. Center number five. Center of curvature. Curvature. Then the number, uh, the number next in this world is focal length. Focal length. What is the focal length of a mirror? Focal length of a mirror is the distance between the pole of a mirror and the principal focus. Again, the, it is the distance between the pole of a mirror and the principal focus or the distance between the principal focus and the center of curvature. The distance between the principal focus and center of curvature. That is what we call principal focus. Next one is what? Radius of curvature. Radius of curvature. What's radius of curvature? This is the distance between the pole of a mirror and the center of the curvature. Distance between the pole of a mirror and center of curvature. And from here it is written as R, or not that, R of the wall, 2M. From the diagram, the R starts from here and ends here. And it involves 2M. Check it. So that's why we have all the relationship between R and 2L and L. So R and L. So 
radius of curvature is twice the focal length. Radius of curvature is twice the focal length. That is what we have to know about this mirror. The next one is what? We also have what we call radar grams. Radar grams. The rule of radar grams. The rules of ray diagrams. So we have ray diagrams in physics. The rules are what? Now the first one is as we have known that this is principal axis. This point is what? Pole. This point is what? Principal focus. Why this point is what? Center of curvature. So the rule, the first one says, if a ray of a ray of light is parallel to the principal axis, the rule says it must pass. It must pass through the wall. Principal focus after reflection. A ray of light that is parallel to the principal axis must pass the principal focus after reflection. That is the first one you have to know. A ray of light that is parallel to the principal axis must pass through the wall. Principal focus after reflection. That is the first one. The second one. A ray of light that passes through the principal focus must be parallel to the principal axis after reflection. A ray of light. This point is called the pole. This is the focus by the center of curvature. Now, when a ray of light passes through the principal focus of the mirror, the rule says it was parallel to the principal as its after reflection. It is the compass of the first one. Compass of the first one. So when a ray of light is parallel, or when a ray of light passes through air to the mirror, and the rule says it must travel in parallel direction to the principal axis. The third one, which is the last rule, a ray of light through the center of curvature. Don't forget our pole, our F, our C. Now, when a ray of light passes through C to the mirror, when it passes through C to the mirror, can you see it? Then it travels back along the same path. It travels back along the same path, P A T H. So when a ray of light passes through C to the mirror, so it is reflected along the same path. These are the three rules for us to draw ray diagram of objects. Now let's go to the ray diagrams now properly. The first one is what? Objects. At the back of C, which is object beyond C. So, we want to draw the diagram objects beyond C. As we have it, our principal focus, as uh, uh, the pole, the principal focus, center of curvature. Now, this is the object at the back of C. Object beyond C. See the object here standing here? Now, the ray goes like this. The rule says passes F. Now, a ray that passes F. The rule says it must pass parallel to the principal passes. Now, this is the first reflected ray. This one. Why this is the second reflected ray? Meets they meet here, so the, up, the image will form here. Now, the, what they will ask you, they will ask to draw the diagram. Then the position of the image is very, very important. Where does the image form? Where does the image form? It's very, very important. Then the size of the image. The first is that the image form. Let's say the size now. Number one, the image forms between F and C. Can you see now this? F, D, C. The 
image forms here. Number two, the image is it is inverted. What's the meaning of inverted? Look at the object standing straight, but the image turning upside down. This is what we call inversion. So it is inverted. Number three, it is real. Why is it real? Any image that forms on the screen is real. The image is real. Number four, it is diminished. Diminished means what? Smaller. The image is diminished or smaller. That means uh -huh. smaller. Uh -huh. So when an object is placed at the back of C, this is the image and these are the characters. It's very, very important. You have to know how to draw and to write out the characteristics. The next one is you have to know that object at C. Object at C. That's P, F, C. Now, object here. So we have object at C. So we want to look at well, we want to have the image of this object and its characteristics. Now, the rule says when the rate of light is parallel to the principal as it, it passes through the wall. The principal because after reflected, this is the first reflected ray. When a ray of light passes passes end to the mirror, then it reflected. So this is reflected, separate reflected. So the image forms here. Now, this is the object, this is the image. So the car size is now number one. It forms at C. Number two. It is the same size size as the object. Number three. It is inverted. Number four. It is real. So these are the things you should know the meaning of real now. This is forming on the screen surface. It is if, if, if it forms out of that, it is virtual. So this image is forming, these are images, these are not, these are images forming on the screen surface, it will be real. Then inverted, turn it upside down, the same thing. Uh -huh. Then forms at exactly C. So when the object are C, the image will also be at C. Then let's go to the third one. The third diagram is now object between C and F. Object between C and F. Now, let's draw the diagram, something like this, something like this, aha. So, this is the F, this is C, we're talking about objects around here, C and F. So, when a ray of light passes, is parallel to the principle as X, Uh -huh. Which means it it passes more focus. This is the continuation of the ray. Then when a ray of light passes, C to the mirror, it travels back along the same path. So let's say this is the continuation of the ray. So this is where the image forms. I see that the image will be large. Check it. So this is the diagram. Again, when the ray of light is parallel to the principal axis, it passes F to the mirror after reflection. So this is the reflection of the ray. Then, when it passes C to the mirror, it travels along the same path. So they meet here, the objects and the image from there. So what are the aspects of the moment? It forms. Behind the mirror. Number two, it is upright. Upright means erect. Can you see that standing the way the object is standing, not turning now this time around? Number three, it is virtual. Virtual means at the back of the mirror. It will not, it will not form the front of the mirror. It's virtual, forming at the back 
of the mirror. Number four, very, very deep now. I see it. Very, very deep. So we call it magnified. It is magnified. It, it is magnified. Or larger. Ha. When you see magnified, we call it larger. And when the object is played between C and F, the example of this is what? Shaving. Shaving glass. Shaving glass. So, whereby a large object uh, image is obtained. So, example of this diagram is what? Shaving mirror. Shaving mirror. The next one we need to treat is what? Image. Object form. Uh, image form. Or uh, object. Object in front of. Or in front of a convex mirror. Convex. Now, when the rate of light is parallel to the principal axis, the rule says it passes through an arc. Let me draw this dotted line. Is. Now, the next one is on when a ray of light, when a ray of light is parallel to the wall, passes C, or when a ray of light passes F, according to this diagram here, when it passes F, now parallel. So, the meet here, sorry, around here. So that is where the image form. That is where the image form. Can see that the image is very, very small, diminished. Number one, it is virtual. It is diminished. They are smaller. Number three, it is upright. It is upright. So it is virtual, it is diminished, and it is what? Upright. Normally it's bent. Virtual, erect, and diminished for convex. So then application of these mirrors, when we apply them, the first one you have to know is that it is used as a shaving mirror. It is used as a shaving mirror. What kind of mirror is that? That is concave. Number two, it is used by the dentists. Whether they want to remove teeth or other, do other things from a tooth. Check it. The dentists, they use this mirror. What kind of mirror they use? It's also concave. Then it is used in the supermarket to monitor movements. What kind of mirror is used is, is that? It's convex. Number three, it is used as a driving mirror. Driving mirror. What kind of mirror is that? It's convex. And why do we choose convex as a driving mirror? For the one, there are two reasons. The first one is what? It gives a wider field of view. When you look at the one inside the bedroom, very small, I mean, but it will what? It will carry a larger field of view, which means even if, it's, if it is uh, a BRT bus, you see the small glass inside, it will contain all the passengers, it will carry all the passengers, shake it, or the one by the side, it will carry a larger field of view behind the wall, the driver. So that is why it gives a larger field of view. And number two, it gives a red image. That's why, these are the two reasons why we use convex mirror as a driving mirror. Then number four, uh, number five, it is used by the hunters. It is used by the hunters. What kind of mirror is that? Parabolic. Parabolic mirror is one that go far. And all those mirror of the sniper, mirror of the pointer, all those pointer, that is one small touch light at, uh, they use at night. No, it's not a touch light, it's called a pointer. Very, very small. It is usually red or green or other color that goes very far. The light goes very far. 
what is there? It is parabolic mirror. Check it out. The next one, it is used as a headlamp. As a headlamp. What kind of mirror is that? It's also a parabolic. We use parabolic mirror to walk, to design the headlamp so that it will go far more than normal. So we use parabolic for that. So these are the applications of curved mirrors in physics. Then the next one, let's just solve just one question on the mirror. Before we solve a question, I have to give you the mirror formula. The best formula is your now. 1 over f is plus 1 over v plus 1 over u. 1 over f is for the wall, 1 over v plus 1 over u. f is what? Focal length. V is what? Image distance. U is what? Object distance. So, these are the things you have to know. And the depends on the mirror. It depends on the mirror. So, for concave, F is always positive. And V is always positive. The only exception is when the object is virtual. So, but the object here are real. I told you the image here are real. The image here are real. But if the image is virtual, F remains positive, but V becomes negative. M, negative, a positive here. Yeah? M, negative, a half. For virtual. So this is the first aspect you have to understand very well. On that concave, we have two aspects. We have the real aspect, we also have the wall, virtual aspect. Now, for real, you know that F is positive, V, which is even distance, is positive, if it's real. Then M is also positive, if it's real. But for virtual, F is positive. For virtual, V is negative. M is negative for virtual. The next one, we have to go to what? Convex. F is negative. V negative. M negative. So far, the image is always virtual. No real image here. So it's virtual. So this is what you have to follow. And this concave mirror is called converging mirror. Why the convex mirror is called diverging? Aha. So if you if you understand all these are written, ah, you solve questions very well. You understand most of the question in mirror. Let me solve one, just one question. Now, question one. Let's solve question. Let's solve this question. Hmm. A concave mirror. I need to write it. I love writing questions now. So a concave. Do you know the kind of mirror that dealing with this? A concave mirror having a radius of 24 centimeter produces a real image four times the size of the object. The distance of the objects from the mirror is now the first thing is that the radius of curvature is what? 
24 centimeter. We need the rail. We need to find F. F is what? R over 2, which is what? 24 over 2. 12 centimeter. The next one give you the question of what? We are giving magnification. M is what to what? 4. M is 4. And it's real. Let's go to real, concave, real, concave. So these are the parameters now here. So you go back. So the formula is one now. We have M is what to what? F over U minus M. That's the formula for linear magnification under concave mirror. So F is uh, M is what? 4. F is what? 12 over U minus 12. What do we do? We cross multiply from here. We have 4 times 2, you have what? Sorry, you have used it here. 4 U. 4 times 12, that is what? 48. Equals to what? 12. What do we do? We collect 9 10s. 4 U equals to what? 12 plus 48. 4 U equals to 12 plus 48 is what? If you add it to that, the answer is what? 60. By like 4. By like 4. Now, 60 in 4 places, the answer is what? 15 centimeters. That is the object distance we are asked to calculate. Look at it very well. A concrete mirror having a radius of 24 centimeters produces a real image four times the size of the object. Four times. That is my question here. Note that the distance of the object from the mirror is the distance of the object. That's you. The distance of the object. Object distance from the mirror is. So you have to write the parameter then. This formula is very, very important. M is equal to F over U minus F to find a linear manipulation in terms of object distance and focal length. So put in the values F, uh, M is equal to 4. Uh, F is equal to what? 12. Then U is unknown. Then put, then cross multiply. We have 4 times this, 4 U, 48, 12, like that. Color lighting. Take it this to this side. We have 60. 4 is equal to what? 60 to the 4. The Bible said that what? 4, which means space 16 to 4 places. Each is what? 15 centimeters. Thank you.